Thanks for checking out this review video. So let's get into Season 2, Episode 2 of Creepshow on Shudder. Once again, just so people know, no spoilers on this. I can't even do a little synopsis because it's forbidden as far as the terms for me to get the screeners and do the reviews. And also because the stories in them are so short, it's about 25 minutes-ish, that doing a little synopsis could just ruin too many things, honestly. So anyway, I will tell you what the titles are and we'll go through these. Now, I will say, if you watch my review for uh, Season 2, Episode 1, this episode I think is a step back from that I didn't expect that it would stay at that same level there was some real good stuff in that episode this episode there is still some good stuff but it's definitely a step down in my opinion so now the big thing is where are they going to go with the episodes coming up I'm hoping they go back up or if it kind of goes like this fluctuates a bit that's fine that's kind of how episode or uh, season one was so I would expect that but Anyway, uh, this episode comes out Thursday, April 8th. Now, the first story is Dead and Breakfast, and I wasn't a huge fan of this one. This one was eh, uh, directed by Axel Carolyn, uh, who did film Soulmate, Tales of, of Halloween, one of the stories in Tales of Halloween, and an episode of The Haunting of Bly Manor, which I have not watched yet. I need to get caught up on that. So that's that's been on my list, so much on my list. Uh, written by Michael Russellet, who wrote the script for Dude Bro Party Massacre 3. So shout out to that guy, because Dude Bro Party Massacre 3 is awesome. It's in my collection back here. Very good. Uh, and also Eric Sandoval was involved in the writing of the script as well. Uh, this stars the bigger names being Ali Larder, who's best known for some stuff like House on Haunted Hill, Final Destination within the horror realm, and C. Thomas Howell, who's... Best known for The Outsiders, his role as Pony Boy in The Outsiders, but I think he should be best known for his role in the movie The Hitcher with Rucker Howard. That film is awesome. I rewatched it about a year, maybe about a year ago or so. It's so good. If you haven't watched that film in a while, just go back. It is outstanding, and C. Thomas Howell did a great job. And on that note, Allie Larder and C. Thomas Howell do a really good job with their roles in this story. My problem is... The script is okay. I mean, the story, the concept. It's an okay concept, but where they chose to go with it, I kind of saw it coming a mile away, and it's just not that compelling, in my opinion. It's, eh. But the acting's good. I, I enjoyed the acting. I do like the initial premise, the initial, the initial setup of it. It's kind of taking kind of a subsection of horror, and it's kind of a more, like, dark, serious point. Uh, part, but uh, it kind of makes it a little bit ridiculous and over the top and has kind of a comedic take on it to a degree, which, you know, that's what a lot of these creep show stories do. So you would expect that type of thing. But it just, it seems kind of boring, in my opinion. It, it's kind of boring. There are some things that could have been done with this concept. I just don't think it works out. I just really don't think it works out that well. But like I said, good performances, so you can revel in those. Especially, I, I was excited that C. Thomas Howell was in it. Like, very excited, because I can't remember the last time I saw him in anything. And like I said, he was awesome in The Hitcher. I would love to meet him and tell him that in person. Uh, the integration of comic panels in this has actually worked really well. There's a portion, it's kind of used to tell a backstory that's, that's kind of important to tell in this. So I like the way they use that. Um, they put a, oh, I already talked about that, my, my apologies. There is a way they move the story with something a bit implausible, and they could have easily actually made it more believable. That's one of the things, is how they get from one part of the story to another part of the story is not that believable. Um, it's more of a kind of convenience of writing, in a sense. It's not a huge issue, and some people may see it and just be like, yeah, whatever, I don't, I don't really care that much, I'm just accepting whatever's going on, but it's just a small thing that I saw, and I always bring these things up when I recognize them. There's a coming together of kind of old and new in this that I do find kind of interesting. It's kind of like a old version, in a sense, of this darker sub subset of horror that I was, I was talking about, and a newer version of it, and... That's kind of interesting to watch in the beginning, but once again, the whole thing is where they go with it and how that develops is 
I just think not super compelling, unfortunately. From a technical standpoint, though, it looks good, well-directed, all that stuff. Uh, like I said, already very well acted. And like I said, I saw the end coming a mile away, and when it ended, I was just kind of like, eh, okay. I mean, it wasn't bad. It was fine. I expect that they're going to have, you know, these stories pop up where I'm not that into them. Now, maybe someone out there really loved this one. I'm sure someone did. You can put it in the comments and let me know. But overall, I'm going to give this one story a two-star rating. Not big on it. But Allie Larder and C. Thomas Howe, you guys did an excellent job. So good job. Um, the story, the next story on this one is Pesticide, which I liked more than Dead and Breakfast, definitely. Uh, directed by Greg Nicotero. We've already talked at length about, you know, his resume, so I'm not going to go into that. Written by Frank Dietz, uh, who wrote scripts for Naked Souls, Mischievous, uh, Magic in the Mirror, just a few that I pulled out. Nothing super known. Uh, and it stars Josh McDermott, uh, who's of Walking Dead fame, which... I don't watch The Walking Dead, so this is kind of my first time seeing Josh McDermott, and he's a great actor, and his role is really fun, and the way he plays his role is really fun, so I really enjoyed him, uh, and Ashley Lawrence is in it in a smaller part than, than the other two main people in it, uh, but she does a solid job with it, obviously she's best known from Hellraiser films, Love her, met her in person, she's super cool. And my favorite in this is Keith David, obviously very well known for things like The Thing, which is an amazing, amazing film. And They Live, two John Carpenter films, by the way, um, he's a killer actor. The amount of IMDb credits he has is in friggin' sane. I wrote it down, 326 acting credits on IMDb. He does a lot of, like, voicing for cartoons and stuff like that, but, dude, that guy is so prolific. He is putting in so much work. He's still working. He's a delight in this. I mean, I said that McDermott did an excellent job and he really did, but every time Keith David is on, on screen in this, he just steals the whole show. I love him in this. He is so good. I feel that way about him kind of every time I see him in a film, but in this story in particular, he just strikes you as like, chewing scenery like nobody's business his line delivery is epic i love that guy keith david is ah, so great so he's one of the best parts about this but it is a good story it's an interesting story and with the very very beginning you can see very heavy influence through uh from a film i'm sorry very heavy influence from a film that is older that is pretty beloved that has similar a similar story just just to start this does deviate a lot from that so you can see the parallel with it and I, I know some people if you're watching this and you've already seen it you know what I'm talking about for sure uh, there are some portions with ADR problems in this now ADR is basically where after the fact they re-record dialogue from the actors in the areas where you know maybe the dialogue didn't come out that great it sounds a little messed up so they're trying to get like a better quality of the audio there and some of the ADR doesn't really match up all that well and it it's wonky it's weird so that is kind of an issue another small issue is and some people may not even catch this one but uh there, there's a moment where someone's driving in a car and you can see the scenery behind them the car is turning it's taking a turn but the wheel has not been moved at all like the guy is still just holding his hands not moving the wheel, steering wheel whatsoever and the car is turning uh that's something that kind of threw me but like i said that's a probably a small thing most people probably won't acknowledge that or see that i don't know but let me know if you did um keith david like i said i'm gonna re repeat this keith david keith david keith david he steals the show he's not in it initially but once he shows up and he has a good role in it well-written character ah, god he's great uh some minor attention oh nope sorry i already covered that one with the steering wheel there are some fun practical effects sequences in this, especially ones that are invar in involving, involving, I'm sorry, I don't know what's wrong with me today, involving larger pieces that they made for practical effects. So if you've already seen it, you know what I'm talking about. Those moments look really good. Practical effects are really good. There's some good kind of gruesome stuff to this, creepy stuff to this. I like those aspects of it. Very fun. 
And this one actually plays heavily on kind of morality and socioeconomic themes, at least initially. But then it starts to really kind of wind, and you don't really know where it's going to land in the end. So I like the aspect of not really being able to know where it goes, especially after seeing the Dead and Breakfast one, where I was basically like, I know pretty much exactly where this one is going. No surprise. This one, I spent the whole time going through just very engaged because I'm like, I don't know where they're going to go with this. There are so many directions they could go. And it was fun. It, it, this one is legitimately fun. I did enjoy it. It's a good time. So out of five stars with half stars in play, I'm giving it three. I'm going to have a very solid three. I was between three and three and a half. I don't think it's quite at the three and a half, but three. I'm definitely going to give it a three. It's a good time. I enjoyed it. And uh, it is the bright spot of episode two so we'll see where we go with episode three but i'm gonna have the reviews for all of the episodes and just a reminder i also have all the episode reviews for season one and the specials and those are available in one playlist on my channel so there you go uh real quick hit the subscribe button if you can for me and you can because it really literally only takes a second it means a lot to me and the growth of my channel and i do appreciate it Every time someone hits the subscribe, I get an email about that. I see your profile. I look at it and I say, thank you very much to this person. I actually literally do that in my mind when I look at it. So I really do appreciate it. And just, you know, join this nerdy horror community. It's a good time. Also hit the notification bell button because that way you will know when I'm putting up more review reviews like this, more in-depth ones that have spoilers, uh, unboxings, haul videos, all that stuff. And the other thing, the big thing is, I just have to thank you for taking your time to check this out. I really do appreciate it. And until next time, keep it brutal.